Hello everybody, welcome back. This is your friend Trickman01. And as you can see, you're joining me after launch today. We're already in orbit around um, Kerbin. But what I wanted to do is go over you real quick what the plan is for today's episode. Um, also, just kind of FYI, there's this uh, this asteroid here is on a direct impact impact for Kerbin, so that's gonna happen pretty much at this point. Ooh. Anyways, that's neither important. Um, it'll just bounce off, no big deal. So what we are going to do today is try to get into an encounter with Jewel. And you can see I already have uh, a refueler over there, but I haven't done any science or anything. I just wanted that there, so if I decided to come back, I'd have a little bit of fuel to fill up some of my tanks with. So, and then on top of that, not only do I want to get to Jewel, but I also want to go ahead and... Um, do a landing on lathe. So the goal for the episode is to get lathe. Yes, yes, to get lathe. Um, so I'm gonna set up everything as far as escaping Kerbin's orbit and all that good stuff. Not Kerbin, well, yes, Kerbin's orbit, but escaping Kerbin's sphere of influence and all that. And I will, uh, I'll get back to you guys when, when we have uh, a little bit more of a flight plan gathered. So I will see everybody there. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have gotten into an encounter with Jewel over here. We're still very, very far away, however. I think I need to raise up my um, my orbit a little bit so we can try to get closer. And hopefully, once we get particularly close, once we kind of get everything in line, the goal is to be able to aero break into orbit. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do a maneuver right about here. And let's see if we can't raise this up a little bit. Let's see just how close we can get. We're still very, very far away, unfortunately. It's kind of tough to tell exactly what's happening. But we are trying to raise our normal. If we can get that within... I feel like we've gone too far. So I'm going to play around with this a little while. I just want to show you guys where we were at the moment. Our periapsis is still very far away. But we're just going to try to get it just a hair closer. And hopefully be able to aero break into um, orbit around Jewel. You can see we've used most of our fuel. Um, actually, well, you know, down here it says, well, we have to have this top stage, I guess, is why it's showing so much extra fuel. But in this stage, we've burned through a lot of fuel, but this much is still a lot with these nuclear engines. So I'm just going to play around with everything a little bit, try to get our periapsis quite a bit closer to Jewel. And I'll see you guys as soon as we get everything figured out a little bit more. Right, and we are back and as you can see well as you can see now I've planned a maneuver to get us a little bit closer it's still really really far away from Jewel but hopefully as we get closer we can correct just a little bit more and just keep doing minor corrections as we go and hopefully that'll enable us to get as close as we would like to get to it um, lining up with our target here and we will go ahead and burn here in just a second well, actually 3 hours, 31 minutes, and 36 seconds. But, let's go ahead and get into position. I've added some lights. I forgot they were blue. Didn't mean to leave them blue. Just playing around with them a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to see on YouTube, at least the ship. Now the good news is, when we're still this far away from Jewel, we don't have to be as precise with the burns as we normally do. Let's say if we were trying to land on Minmus or the moon. Especially since Jewel has such a large gravity well. But we're still going to try to be as precise as we can. To do that. So, like I said, the goal of this episode is to land on Lathe. And as long as we can get into Lathe's atmosphere, that should be very, very achievable. Alright. 
and we will start burning right now I guess it's not gonna take too much we still have plenty of fuel left in the uh, nuclear engine stage and then we're just gonna keep on playing until we can get a nice periapsis where we want it um, preferably less than uh, lower than the atmosphere of Joule, that way we can use it to aero break. Alright, so let's see where we ended up. 106 million meters. So, you know, we're still working on it, but... Um, you can see everything is starting to come together a little bit more, so as we get closer and closer we will be able to see exactly where we need to go. Let's look at the orbit now. And we appear to be... just right there. So I'm going to keep playing with that. I just want to show you guys what our progress was. Our periapsis is about 106,000 kilometers away from Joule, uh, which is very, very far indeed. And we're just going to keep working to get that lower and lower and lower. And hopefully by the time we get there, we can be inside of its atmosphere to do an aero break and get into orbit that way. Alright guys, welcome back. As you can see, I think we have a Joule periapsis of about 115 kilometers. Um, the game can't really decide for sure. We should. We should. If it's showing there, we should. So that should put us into proper aero braking maneuver. And uh, hopefully, hopefully things will go well from there, so let's get a little bit closer and let's hope the game uh, does recognize this uh, little encounter right here. Man, this is slow going though, isn't it? We're on full warp and uh, looks like we're crawling around at about a snail's pace. Um, but we do need to be ready to de-warp. That way, once we do get right on Jewel, we'll be able to... Where is Jewel? Where is the actual planet? There it is. And we should come uh, within the atmosphere, and that should give us proper aero braking maneuver, hopefully. I am prepared to burn either way, though. Prograde or retrograde, depending on what may or may not be needed. And the game can't decide whether this is the closest encounter or where we're actually going to have an encounter there, which I believe we are. I don't see why we shouldn't, but my last quick save is in a spot where we'll have a for sure encounter. And here comes Jewel, along with the Jewel Refueler. Mark 2, but I did notice I forgot to put a docking port on this ship, so the Jewel Refueler will do us no good. Uh, but, that's okay. We're just here for the science anyways. We do need to unlock a few more things. And then the game will be super easy. Eventually we'll get to Elu and Moho. I think those are the ones we need to um, we need to be prepared for. Still a long way away from our jewel encounter though, but let's not talk right through it. We all know I have a bad habit of doing that. And here comes Jewel. So hopefully after it passes right here, it'll the game will get less confused. Maybe not. Oh, so it thinks... Okay, I see what it's thinking now. Right. So we are almost to the jewel... What I hope is going to be the jewel encounter. If it's not, I blame the game. Alright, so here we come. Here we come. Here we come. And... Let's see what happens. Oh, yep. Jewel encounter. Perfect. Right, so our periapsis comes... Eh. Turned out to be not quite within the atmosphere of Jewel, but we're going to quick save anyways. And I think... Let me see. If I burn straight retrograde... Did I forget to put RCS on this? I think I did. That would explain a lot. Indeed I did. I must have used an older model of the ship when I modified this one. That's okay. Just have a little bit of fuel. So if I burn straight retrograde... Okay, so yeah. 
Okay, that's about where the um, atmosphere starts. Let's go down to right there, and hopefully, that's quick save right here. Hopefully, we'll be able to use that um, to break ourselves enough to get into orbit around Jewel. That's the goal. And uh, we'll see. We will see. Let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit. And I can actually see some of Jules' moons also. There's one. Uh, there's one. So let's get closer. And let's see what Jewel looks like from the in from our spaceship. Trust me, we'll be able to see it from this point. At least we should. We are facing. Uh, it's around here somewhere, I promise. Shouldn't be that hard to spot. It's a big green thing in the sky. Let's try doing this button. Nope, nothing. Hmm, that is strange. Oh well. I would think we'd be able to see it because we're not that far away. Oh, okay, we are pretty far away still. Alright, let's get a little bit closer. And... Slow. Right now, maybe we'll be able to see it. Oh, see, there it is right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right here... Right where the mouse is pointing, that is Jewel. So let's go ahead and get closer. And prepare for our arrow breaking maneuver. Ooh, okay. Um, hopefully I didn't, ooh, that's a pretty view. Look at that guys, look at that gas giant. And that is Lathe, which is our target for the end of the episode. Not seeing any of the other moons. Oh wait, there's one right there. Not sure if you guys can see that or not. There's Lathe, which has an atmosphere, which makes it perfect for landing. So, uh, we'll fast forward here in just a second. Alright, let's get a little bit closer, and once we start to get right about here, let's go ahead and turn pro grade, just in case my apoapsis starts to fall too uh, too far too fast. Yeah, apoapsis. Or periapsis, whatever the case may be. Because I am slightly concerned, and, you know, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and pull in our solar panels before they break. And they are in. Well done. Alright, so... Alright, so we should be within the atmosphere of Jewel now. Let's take a look at our map. Alright, so that's getting farther away just like it should, and I'm hoping... That if things go just the way I want them to, I shouldn't have to, um... Use any fuel at all to get into orbit. So you can see that's coming around very quickly. And I am slowly descending into Jules' atmosphere. Actually, not that slowly. Oh, we are in orbit. So, um... Really need those numbers to... Alright, but the periapsis isn't dropping that quickly, so I'm going to hold out for faith that we can do what we need to do here. Ooh. Periapsis is still at about 109, so that should... That should, uh... Be fine. Our numbers should stop dropping here in just a second and start to rise.
And so right about now we should start rising, which we have, which is good. So we're in orbit around Joel. That's good. Um, hopefully we can go ahead and fast forward a little bit. We don't want our April axis to drop too much though. I may have to burn here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and burn. Keep our apoapsis from dropping. Just a little burn should be fine. So I get a little bit closer to the edge of the atmosphere. Alright, that should be fine. Should be fine. And now we are out of the atmosphere. So we can quick save. And I am going to go ahead and try to... Ooh, we are in a complete polar orbit. That's going to make landing on lathe difficult. But anyways, as I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and fix a few things with the orbit and all of that stuff. And I will be back very, very shortly. Alright guys, you're not going to believe this, but just out of sheer luck somehow our polar orbit gets to a point where we can actually get into an encounter with lathe um, just out of sheer happenstance it's actually quite amazing the odds of that happening are pretty pretty slim so I am quite amazed that that is happening so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do our very very best to get there and we may not be able to, but I have a very, very good feeling things are going our way right now. Billy Bobden is happy. He's a long, long way from home. He might never get back. Probably will never get back. And these nuclear engines have way more fuel than anyone would ever suspect. But yeah, everything's going pretty swimmingly on our final approaches to lathe somehow. Things aren't supposed to go this well, especially in Kerbal Space Program, but they are, so I'm very, very happy with that. Alright, so we got to keep an eye on our um, encounter, because if this doesn't go just right, then we're going to miss pretty much what's going to be our only opportunity. Let's go ahead and throttle down as we run through our last bit of fuel in this stage. And I'm surprised these nuclear engines are still going. Okay, they stopped now. And, um, no. Let's move this up like that. And we can do that. Oh gosh, I hate. No! Oh! The Kraken has struck. All right, I'm gonna quick load and I'll meet you guys uh, when I get back to about this point. All right, guys, we are back and I am coming in for my final landing now. I'm actually gonna try to land on this little island here, if possible, which it may not be. I may have waited too long to start my burn. Uh, you can see I went ahead and ditched the other stage. I don't know why I have all my parachutes staged there. Let's go ahead and deploy those. Yeah, I may have wa I waited too long for it, but we are coming in for a landing on lathe, so that's that's cool, I guess. We're almost out of fuel too, so this this land landing probably isn't going to happen. We'll do a splashdown, which is fine. Billy Bob then's fine with that. He can leave in the water for a while. Oh well, those things will happen. Anyway, so yeah, we're coming in for a final landing now on lathe. We already have our parachutes deployed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut off my engines just in case I need a little bit of that juice when the parachutes do finally deploy to help slow us down. 
uh, lathe does have a pretty thin atmosphere, so if the parachutes would deploy any second now, that would be nice. There we go. Oh, gosh, I have the crappy parachutes. Um, all right. Burn, thingy, burn. Do I? No, I thought I had the good parachutes. Either way. I do have the good parachute on the very, very top, so hopefully that'll be enough to, um, to let us do what we need to do, and we're out of fuel, so we have to pray that we grab the right parachutes. Please, uh, Mr. Kraken, sir, don't eat us today. So we are gaining speed, actually. No, we're hovering right around 177. And as soon as we reach a thousand, our parachutes should deploy. We'll transmit that just in case Billy Bob then doesn't make it. Nicely done. The color sky. Ooh, it's a beautiful blue sky though. Love these colors right here. We just missed the land. Just a little bit. Nothing too major. Um, so this is going to be the moment of truth here when these parachutes deploy. Since I put the stuff on, I'm going to lower my landing legs. I'm going to turn on my landing lights. Okay, good. We seem like we're going to be fine. So after a three-year odyssey, um, Billy Bobden is just about to land on lathe. Which is nice. He deserves it. Of course, I chose Lathe to land on because Jewel, you cannot land on it. It's, it's a gas giant. I know I know there are glitches in the game that do technically let you land on Jewel, but we're going to treat the game like it's designed, meaning we're not going to take advantage of that particular glitch. Um, so, yeah, we landed on Jewel. Well done, Billy Bobden. You are a Kerbal Knot among Kerbal Knots. Look, he's already got cabin, well, of course he's already got cabin fever. He's been in that little capsule for three years, 151 days. And he made splashdown. All right. So a quick save. Let's get a seismic reading. Really, maybe you have to be on solid land to do that. Um, can we get a temperature reading? We can get 48 science out of that. Pressure reading. We can get 72 science out of that. Speaking of science, let's go ahead and extend our solar panels. That way Billy Bombden can get some electricity. Uh, let's use a science junior. 60 science, not bad. Let's go ahead and transmit it. Yes, I am aware. And a mystery goo. You observe the goo for 36 science after we transmit. Then we'll take a crew report. Crew report. We'll get 60 science out of that. And we'll wait for that to do that. And let's sail in Billy Bobden out on EVA. EVA report. It says we're flying at lathe, but we know we're not. So let's go ahead and uh, transmit that as well for 88 science. And put him back on. Let's let go. Okay, good to know. Let's put our ladder out. Not that it really does much good. Is he dancing? Go Billy Bobden. Go Billy Bobden. Go Billy Bobden. Go Billy Bobden. Uh, from Lay. Ooh, 112 science. We do like that. Alright, and board, and we'll transmit that as well. And I would love to get a um, surface sample, but I'm just not 100% sure that we'd be able to get back onto the ship. I could try. But for now, I may try later, but for now, let's go back to the Space Center, see what kind of science we've gotten. Congratulations, Billy Bobden, on getting to 
Blaze. It's an accomplishment no other Kerbin not has accomplished before, at least in this save file. So we have 986 science to play with. I really want this to... Really just because of this Clampotron Senior, we can make some nice stable ships with that. So there goes that science out the window already. Not even sure what else there was. And let's see, we can research something else for 300 science. Ion engines, eh, not that interested in ion engines. Turbojets, ram intake, blah blah blah. Um, this RCS fuel tank will come in handy, so let's research that. And that, guys, is going... Well, let's check out the science archives, and then that'll be the end of the episode. So, so far we have been to the sun. Well, we've been around the sun. No moho. We've been to Eve. Kerbin. Of course, we've been to Kerbin, Moon, Minmus. Still need to visit Gilly sometime. We've been to Duna. However, not Ike. Now, this happened during a live stream, but that live stream is in my uh, YouTube channel. I just don't have it in my Kerbal Space Program video, but we have landed on Duna. Drace. We've been to Jewel, as well as Lathe. So, the only planets we have left to visit are Moho and Elu. So, hopefully, we'll be doing one of those uh, shortly. But for now, that's all I got time for in this episode it's probably a long episode as it is but thank you guys so much for watching please leave a like subscribe and thank you so much for watching one more time this is your friend trick man 01 have a great day bye bye now